Afghanistan, Episode 1. Waves of people moved through Afghanistan as they made trade connections, fought wars, and migrated from place to place. Historian Arnold Tynebee described Afghanistan as a, quote, roundabout of the ancient world, unquote, in which a mosaic of ethnic and linguistic groups was left behind as a result. It is mostly a nomadic and tribal society, with different regions of the country having their own traditions reflecting the multicultural and multilingual character of the nation. Stone Age technology has been found and dated between 50,000 to 20,000 BC. North Afghanistan was one of the earliest places to domesticate plants and animals. Various empires have controlled Afghanistan, among the famous leaders being Cyrus the Great, Darius Great, Xerxes, yes, the drag queen from the movie 300, and many more. The Persian Empire was under constant threat of revolt and eventually was conquered by Alexander the Great between 330 to 320 BC. Uh, tribalism was predominant in the region, so the revolt continued on. Many other invasions, including the White Huns, which destroyed Buddhist culture and left much of the country in ruins, the Persians again, and the Arabs. The Arabs introduced Islam in 652 AD, and this would change the course of Afghanistan's history. In 1219 to 1221, Afghanistan was invaded by the Genghis Khan Empire. In 1273, Marco Polo crossed Afghanistan on his way to China to discover the Silk Road, and battles between smaller kingdoms marked the next 200 years. In 1747 to 1773, Ahmad Shah Durrani, also known as Ahmad Shah Abdali and Ahmad Shah Baba, is the founder of today's Afghanistan and continued to rule during this time. Pir Sabir Shah, the spiritual guide at the time, showered his praise for the young Ahmad Shah by declaring him Dari Duran, Pearl of the Pearls, not because he was a military giant, but for his humanity and definite quality as a state statesman. Between 1907 and 1919, Habibullah Khan's regime, Russia and Great Britain signed the Convention of St. Petersburg. This agreement was reached between Britain and the Russian government over the territorial integrity of Afghanistan. On August 19, 1919, Afghanistan was a buffer between the British and Russian empires until it won an independence from the notional British control in 1919. After a while of democracy ended in 1973 via a coup, and in 1978 there was a communist counter coup. The Soviet Union invaded in 1979 to support the tottering Afghan communist regime, touching off a long and destructive war. In 1989, the USSR withdrew after relentless pressure by internationally supported anti-communist rebels. A series of subsequent civil wars saw Kabul finally fall in 1996 to the Taliban, a hardline Pakistani-sponsored movement that emerged in 1994 to end the 
country's civil war and anarchy. Following the 2001 September 11th terrorist attacks, a U.S. allied and anti-Taliban Northern Alliance military action toppled the Taliban for sheltering Osama bin Laden. In December 2004, Hamid Karzai became the first democratically elected president of Afghanistan. Karzai was re-elected in August 2009 for a second term. The 2014 presidential election was the country's first to include a runoff, which featured the top two vote-getters from the first round, Abdullah Abdullah and Ashraf Ghani. Through the summer of 2014, their campaigns disputed the results and traded accusations of fraud, leading to the U.S. diplomatic intervention that included a full vote audit as well as political no negotiations between the two camps. In September 2014, Ghani and Abdullah agreed to form the Government of National Unity, with Ghani inaugurated as president and Abdullah elevated to the newly created position of chief executive officer. The conventional long form of the name is the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. It is a presidential Islamic Republic. They have a mixed legal system of civil, customary, and Islamic law. The name Afghan originally referred to Pashtun people, although today it is understood to include all of the country's ethnic groups, while the suffix stan means place of or country. So Afghanistan literally means land of the Afghans. The national animal is the lion and the national colors are red, green, and black. Despite gains toward building a stable central government, the Taliban remains a serious challenge for the Afghan government in almost every province. The Taliban still considers itself the rightful government of Afghanistan and it remains a capable and confident insurgent force despite its last two spiritual leaders being killed. It continues to declare that it will pursue a peace deal with Kabul only after foreign military forces depart. Flag Description the Afghan flag is highly recognizable. Starting on the hoist side, there are three equal vertical bands of black, red, and green. The national emblem is in white and centered on the red band, but slightly overlapping the other two bands. The center of the emblem features a mosque with pulpit and flags on both sides. Numerals for the solar year 1298, which is 1919, in the Gregorian calendar, the year of Afghan independence, are located below the mosque. The central image is circled by a border of sheaves and wheat on the left and the right. In the upper center is an Arabic inscription, the Shahada, a Muslim creed below, which are rays of the rising sun over the takbir, which is an expression meaning, quote, God is great, unquote, in Arabic. A scroll bearing the name Afghanistan is at bottom center. Black means the past. Red is for independence and bloodshed. And the green is either for agricultural prosperity, hope for the future, or Islam. Afghanistan has had more changes to its national flag in the 20th century than any other country. The colors black, red, and green appeared on most of them. Afghanistan is often called the crossroads of Central, West, and South Asia. Geographic location has played a large part in political development, foreign relations, military history, and the very existence of Afghanistan as an independent state. The total area of Afghanistan is 652,230 square kilometers, which is enough to rank it 41st in size, almost six times the size of Virginia and just slightly smaller than the state of Texas. 
Afghanistan is shaped roughly like a clenched fist with the thumb extended out to the northeast. The northwestern, western, and southern border areas are primarily desert plains and rocky ranges, whereas the southeast and northeast borders rise progressively higher into the major glacier-covered peaks of the Hindu Kush, an extension of the western Himalayas. Only the northern border is formed by a river, the Amu Darya. Afghanistan has so many high mountains, the passes through them have been of profound importance in both the history of invasion of the country and in commerce. In the 320s BC, Alexander the Great invaded the country through the Kushan Pass in the west and left it to the east through the Low Khyber Pass to invade India. These same passes were used by the Mughal Emperor Babur to conquer both Afghanistan and India in the 1500s. The famous Saleng Pass and its Soviet-built tunnel in the central Hindu Kush was one of the main routes the Soviets used to invade Afghanistan in 1979. Today, Afghanistan is divided into 34 different provinces. Kabul is the capital city, being home to 4.635 million people. As far as population distribution in Afghanistan, populations tend to cluster in the foothills and periphery of the rugged Hindu Kush range. Smaller groups are often found in many of the country's interior valleys, but in general the east is more densely settled while the, while the south is sparsely populated. Afghanistan is comprised of many ethnic groups called Afghans, the overwhelming majority of whom follow Islam. The people of Afghanistan are related to many of the ethnic groups in Iran, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Most Afghans are farmers, although a significant minority follow a nomadic lifestyle. In the years since the Soviet invasion and the later civil war, a number of Afghans have fled the country and become refugees in neighboring nations, most typically in Iran and Pakistan. Languages Pashto, Pashto, or Pukto Number of speakers in Afghanistan are approximately 14 million, and Dari, or Farsi, is spoken by almost every ethnic division. Those are Indo-European languages and are the major two languages spoken in Afghanistan. There are other Indo-European, Indo-Aryan languages such as Balochi, Pashai, and Eastern Farsi that are also spoken. Turkic and Altaic languages such as Uzbek and Turkmen are present. Tajiki is also used. As far as the legal system, it is mixed between civil, customary, and Islamic law. Some of the main agricultural production is opium, wheat, fruits, nuts, wool, mutton, sheepskins, lambskins, and poppies. Afghan exports include opium, fruits and nuts, hand-woven carpets, wool, cotton, hides and pelts, and precious and semi-precious gems. As far as industry in, El in Afghanistan, Small-scale production of bricks, textiles, soap, furniture, shoes, fertilizer, apparel, food products, non-alcoholic beverages, mineral water, cement, hand-woven carpets, natural gas, coal, and copper. Baggy cotton trousers are a standard part of Afghan villagers' costumes. The men wear long cotton shirts which hang over their trousers and wide sashes around their waists. They also wear a skull cap and over that a turban which they take off when working in the fields. Women wear long loose shirts or high bodice dresses 
with a swirling skirt over their trousers. They drape a white shawl around their heads. Many women wear jewelry, which is collected as a form of family wealth. When urban women leave their house, they usually wear a burqa or chadier, a long tent-like veil that covers them from head to foot. Women in villages seldom wear the burqa, and educated urban women discarded the custom, especially under Soviet domination where it was regarded as backward. The diet of most Afghan villagers consists mainly of unleavened flat bread called naan, soups, a kind of yogurt called mast, vegetables, fruit, and occasionally rice and meat. Tea is the favorite drink. Although the population of Afghanistan is composed of many distinct ethnic groups, many elements and ways of life are the same universally. Characteristically, the family is the mainstay of Afghan society. There are extremely close bonds which exist within the family, which often consists of members of several generations. The family is headed by the oldest man or patriarch whose word is law for the entire family. Family honor, pride, and respect toward other members are highly prized qualities. Afghanistan contains striking architectural remnants of all ages, including the Greek and Buddhist stupas, shrines or reliquaries, and the monasteries, arches, monuments, intricate Islamic minarets, temples, and forts. Among famous sites are the great mosques of Herat and Mazar-e-Sharif. The minaret of a mosque at Jam in the West Central Highlands, the 1,000-year-old Great Arch of Qual Yi Ye Bost, and Shel Zina, 40 Steps, and rock inscriptions made by Mughal Emperor Babur in Kandahar. The Great Buddha of Bamiyan, the Towers of Victory in Ganzi, and the Emperor Babur's tomb in the Great Balahisar Fort in Kabul. In smaller arts, magnificent light blue-green fired tile work is famous in Herat, along with other fine work in book illumination, illustration, bronze, stone, and wood. Afghanistan cultural life is characterized by traditional arts and pastimes, gold and silver jewelry, marvelous decorative embroidery, and various leather goods are still made in homes. The Afghan rugs are by far the greatest art forms known widely from Afghanistan. Sports are becoming more popular in Afghanistan. Cricket is the country's most popular sport, followed by football, or as we know in the United States, soccer. The Afghan national soccer team has been competing in international competitions since 1941. Other popular sports include basketball, volleyball, bodybuilding, and taekwondo. Afghanistan's basketball team won its first team sports title at the 2010 South Asian Games. The cricket team also won the 2010 ICC Intercontinental Cup. In 2012, the country's three-on-three -three basketball team won the gold medal at the 2012 Asian Beach Games. In 2013, Afghanistan's soccer team followed as it won the SAFF Championship. The national team of Afghanistan has never competed or qualified for the FIFA World Cup, but recently won an international trophy in 2013. A favorite sport in northern Afghanistan is a game called Buzkashi, in which teams of horsemen compete to deposit the carcass of a large headless calf in a goal circle. Afghans also play polo and gosai, 
a team sport similar to wrestling. Also, the Afghan Hound, a type of running dog, originated in Afghanistan and was originally used in hunting. The ancient art of storytelling continues to be a huge part of Afghanistan. Unfortunately, illiteracy rates of Afghanistan are very high. The age-old practice of telling folk tales through music and spoken word is highly developed and a much appreciated form of art. The use of folklore has become the thread that links the past with the present in Afghanistan society. Folk tales concern all parts of Afghan life and teach traditional values, behaviors, and beliefs. They are also major forms of entertainment. Civil war has brought a variety of social problems to Afghanistan, such as poverty, inter-ethnic strife, widespread thievery, the inequality of women, kidnapping, and banditry. Blood feuds handed down through generations are legendary, and revenge is regarded as a necessary redress of wrongs. The Civil War threatened these tendencies, and the ongoing Civil War has continued to kill, wound, and displace hundreds and thousands of civilians. Kabul has been largely without electricity since 1994. Phones, water, and sewage systems have been destroyed. Years of war have separated and impoverished extended families, and many are left to fend for themselves. Some provinces began experiencing famine in the 1990s, and diseases of malnutrition are being reported for the first time in decades. Despite gains toward building a stable central government, the Taliban remains a serious challenge for the Afghan government in almost every province. The Taliban still considers itself the rightful government of Afghanistan and it remains a capable and confident insurgent force despite its last two spiritual leaders being killed. It continues to declare that it will pursue a peace deal with Kabul only after foreign military forces depart. Plant life in Afghanistan is sparse, however, it is also diverse. Trees common in Afghanistan include almonds, pistachios, evergreens, oaks, poplars, and wild hazelnuts. The northern plains are largely dry, treeless steppes. Those in the southwest are nearly uninhabitable deserts, with common plants being camel thorn, local weed, mimosa, spiny restaro, wormwood, and many different types of sagebrush. During times of war, many residents and militias have cleared forests in order to deny hiding places for invading forces. Wood is also used for fuel. In the denser forests, timber is harvested by a timber mafia and sold to other countries, including Pakistan. Pakistan has strict regulations on the use of its timber supply, so the timber mafia attempts to make up for it by taking the forest of Afghanistan. As forest cover decreases, the land becomes less productive and more arid. Loss of food for people and native species of animals is an obvious side effect. Erosion, drought, decreased amount of land for agriculture, and a higher risk of floods plague parts of Afghanistan. Afghanistan as a result. Efforts have been made by the Afghan government and other agencies to team up to turn Afghanistan green by planting new trees and educating the public about sustainability. Animal life is very diverse. Many domestic species have been used for work, food, and companionship in Afghanistan throughout its history. It is not uncommon to see dogs, goats, cattle, camels, sheep, yaks, and horses. Many wild animals reside in Afghanistan. There are more than 100 species of mammals, some of which are nearing extinction. The most cr critically endangered animals include the Bactrian deer, 
goitered gazelle, leopard, marker goat, and snow leopard. Some other wild animals of Afghanistan include the Asiatic brown and black bears, bats, brown bears, foxes, gray wolf, ibex, hares, hedgehogs, striped hyenas, jackals, mongooses, marker polo sheep, palace cat, urials, and wild boar. A camera trap in 2011 snapped a photo of a Persian leopard. The Persian leopard was previously thought to be extinct in Afghanistan. With nine species of wild cats, Afghanistan is only second to sub-Saharan Africa in big cat diversity. But not everything is perfect. Marco Polo sheep, ibex, and other rare prey species are often poached for food. Bears, snow leopards, and wolves are killed for damage prevention and also for their fur. This fur is sold to foreign soldiers and aid workers on local markets. Over 380 bird species and 200 breeding species of birds are found in Afghanistan. Ducks, flamingos, birds of prey species, and partridges are commonly found in Afghanistan, but due to widespread overhunting, all birds are becoming less common. A fun fact, in the eastern Ganzi province of Afghanistan, it may contain the highest breeding colony of flamingos in the entire world. The endangered Siberian crane is also one bird species of great concern within Afghanistan. Now, here are photographs of some other animals of Afghanistan.
next time on Countries of the World, Episode 2, Albania.